need your solar pump to shut off when your stock tank or your storage tank is full, there's a couple of different methods we can utilize. First, we can use a tank full sensor. This is our most reliable option, but it requires us to run a wire from our controller to our stock tank and hang that sensor in the top of the tank. All of our controllers have tank full input, so it's easy to hook that up. Second most common way is a wireless tank full sensor. If you want to use our wireless tank full sensor, there's a link down below where you can check out the details. The third method, and the one I'm going to go over today, is using a float valve, a reverse action pressure switch, and a check valve in order to use pressure as our signal for when to shut off the pump. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps, and today we're going to go over how to use pressure as a signal to tell our solar pump when to turn off. For that, we're going to need our float valve, our reverse action pressure switch, a check valve, and a couple of wires. Let's get in there, show you how to set this up, and show you how it operates. So let's go over what you're going to need in order to shut off your pump using a pressure switch. First, you're going to need a controller that has a tank full input. All of our systems come with a tank full input, so it's super easy to wire this up. The second thing for your pump, you're going to need a check valve. If you don't already have a check valve installed, you're going to need to pull up the pump and install a check valve. It's required because we're going to need to be able to store pressure in our line and we can't have it run back down past the pump. The other components you're going to need are a reverse action pressure switch, a float valve, and a little bit of wire in order to hook those two up. Let's go over our system requirements and the components you're going to need in order to get this set up. First, you're going to need a solar pump controller with a tank full input. Luckily, all of our systems come with a tank full input, so it makes it very easy to set up. Second, you're going to need a check valve at your pump. If your pump has a built-in check valve, then you already have that covered. But if you have one of our helical pumps and you haven't installed a check valve, you're going to need to install that because we need that to hold the pressure in the system to prevent the water from running back down past the pump. Next, you're going to need a float valve, a reverse action pressure switch, and a little bit of wire to hook it all up. So we've installed our reverse action pressure switch and we've also installed our float valve. The nice thing about this setup is you can have multiple float valves going to different tanks if you want to do multiple stock tanks off of a single system. So let's head on over. We're going to do our wiring now. In this case, I'm just using a little bit of our tank full wire. The gauge is important. If you need to get other wire, it doesn't matter. You can use anything from 14 gauge up to 22 gauge. You do want it outdoor rated so it's not going to degrade in the sun. And if you're doing a long-term installation, it's probably best to install this in some conduit so if any animals or critters get in, so they don't chew on the wire. So the first thing we need to do is install our float valve. In this case, you can see we've installed it in the side of the stock tank. We've drilled through and then uh, tightened up the nut there in order to get it positioned. There's multiple different types of float valves. What's important here is we want a float valve when the ball raises or the little float raises that it completely shuts off the water. Any drips here are going to cause cycling of our pump. So it's very important once this closes, it completely seals off and doesn't drip or leak any water as that is going to cause it to cycle. So we have this installed. It's all set. You'll see later on when the water is flowing, when the float valve comes up, it shuts off all the water and the system shuts off. So let's head over. We're first going to wire this up to our reverse action pressure switch. Then we're going to go and wire it to our controller and then test the whole thing out. So as you can see here, we've already installed a reverse action pressure switch. Let's talk really quickly about reverse action versus standard action. Our solar pump contacts that are going to shut the pump off are expecting reverse logic compared to an AC pump. So if you're using this with an AC pump, no problem. You're going to use a standard action pressure switch. When the pressure is reached, the contacts are going to open and it's going to stop the flow of electricity to the pump. In our case, that's the complete opposite. Our controllers go off of a closed contact in order to shut off the pump and that's called a reverse action pressure switch. So when the pressure is reached, in our case, the contacts are gonna close, and those closed contacts are gonna tell us the tank is full, we need to shut the system off. These are a little bit harder to find, but we have plenty available, so if you need one, give us a call, and we'll get you set up with a reverse action pressure switch. Now we're gonna go ahead, we'll pull the cover off here. This is a two-pole reverse action pressure switch but we're going to only use one of the poles, either the left side or the right side. It doesn't matter which one. We have our wire here. We're going to run through the hole and we're going to hook it up to these two contacts. Right now there's no pressure in the system, so you're going to see the contacts are open. When the pressure is reached, the contacts are going to close. It's going to have continuity and that's going to tell the pump to shut off. So let's get these wired in here, both of the wires on the same side. 
My wires have red and blue. This does not matter for the controller which one goes to which terminal in either the pressure switch or the controller. So let's get this hooked up real quick. The connection here is super easy to make. What I like to do at the end is take a little piece of electrical tape and wrap it around here to hold the wire in place so we're not pulling on our conductor. If you're gonna do a long-term installation, then I do recommend running a piece of flexible conduit from here over to your controller to prevent the wire from getting chewed on. So that's as simple as the connection is here. What I'm gonna show you later is when we're testing our system and raising the floats, this is the adjustment screw for the cut on and cut off pressure. This is preset at the factory for a turn on at 30 PSI and a turn off at 50 PSI. For some of these, that can be a little bit high. So we turn this counterclockwise and that's gonna reduce the turn on and turn off pressure of our system. So when you get this all set up, if you raise the float valve and you're not seeing these contacts close and you're not hearing it close, then you're gonna to wanna to back off this screw reduce the turn on and turn off pressure until uh, we have it sufficient where the solar pump can turn it off. So we're all set for here now. During the troubleshooting phase, when we get it all set up, I like to leave the cover off. It makes it really easy to see whether our contacts are open or our contacts are closed. Now that we have the reverse action pressure switch hooked up, let's go to the other end and we'll hook up the wire to our controller. It takes about 30 seconds, then we'll be able to test this system. So let's go ahead and get this wired up to our controller. In our case, we're using our tank full inputs labeled COM and TH. If you're using our PRO system, you're gonna use the little pigtail that comes out of the connector. Again, like I mentioned, polarity doesn't matter, so we can hook the red and blue wire to either of the controller inputs. In this case, we're gonna run it up through our gland and into our terminal strip. So how this whole system is going to work is when the float valve raises, it's going to shut off the flow of water. The pump's not gonna know that, and the pump's gonna keep pumping, and the pressure is gonna raise in the system. Once the pressure reaches our turnoff point of the reverse action pressure switch, the contacts are gonna close. That's gonna send a signal over to our controller that says we've reached the pressure, it's time to turn off the pump, and our controller is gonna ramp the pump down. Now it's gonna sit there with pressure in the system, until say the livestock or your horses come over, drink some water, the float valve is gonna lower and water is gonna start flowing into our tank. That's gonna lower the pressure in the system. When the pressure lowers past our turn on point for the reverse action pressure switch, the contacts are gonna open. Again, the signal is gonna be sent to the controller that the tank is empty, we need to start pumping again. Water is gonna start flowing once our pump ramps up over a couple of seconds with the soft start. And once the water level rises back up, the same thing's gonna happen over again. The pump's gonna shut off. Let's go ahead, I'll show you how that works right here with our demonstration. We've got it all wired. Let's flip the system on and see how it actually works. Currently our contacts are open, so that's gonna tell our pump to start pumping. It's gonna ramp up to speed, take about uh, 10 seconds to get to full flow. And then once it fills up, we're gonna see So there we have it, the float raised, the reverse action pressure switch closed the contacts because the pressure was reached and the tank full light turned on our controller, shutting off the system. So this is a very simple and reliable setup to, in order to shut off your controller when your tank is located significant distances from your well. Now there are two main aspects of troubleshooting I wanna mention here. One is like I said at the beginning, 
If the reverse action pressure switch is set too high, it's set at 3050, the system might not be able to generate enough pressure in order to shut off your pump. In that case, we're gonna to wanna to go counterclockwise with the middle screw, and that's gonna back off and lower the turn on and turn off pressures. In my case, I had to go about five turns, and I have it set around 10 to 15 PSI for the turn on, and then 25 to 30 PSI for the turn off. The beginning, I just couldn't generate that 50 PSI, especially because we kind of have a hazy day here today. So if you make that adjustment up front, just raise up your float, see if your system turns off. If it doesn't turn off, lower your float, make that adjustment, and just do that multiple times until you get reliable turn on and turn off. The second thing I want to mention here is your float valve and possible cycling of the system. So you want a float valve that turns off very reliably and shuts off the flow of water completely. That'll prevent cycling in the system. If you have a float valve, maybe an older one with the gasket worn out that's leaking, that's gonna cause cycling in the system. Now it is normal when the float valve's closing to have possibly one or two instances of system cycling. With our controller, that doesn't matter at all. Our controller always ramps up and ramps down the pump, so it's not gonna reduce the lifetime of your pump. If you're using it at the AC pump, you definitely don't want that turn on and turn off to happen when the float valve is closing. If you're finding some reliability issues with cycling, either because you have a leak somewhere or your float valve just not closing uh, crisply, then you can add a small pressure tank here of anywhere from one to five gallons. That small pressure tank is gonna act as a buffer for the system. And so any small leaks aren't gonna cause a significant change in pressure. and It'll greatly reduce uh, the cycling when it turns off. And if you have a small drip, it's gonna help prevent cycling from that small drip. But overall, these are very reliable systems, about as reliable as our wireless system. If you don't wanna mess with all this, like I said, we have a wireless system that just wirelessly communicates the tank full status back to your controller. Works with AC pumps, works with solar pumps. So if you wanna just go with that system, give us a call or check it out online. But otherwise, if you wanna use the float valves and go to multiple tanks, this is a great option for it. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. If you need these components, give us a call at 888-637-4493 or visit us at rpssolarpumps.com.